Father, we thank you for bringing us to this point. We thank you for all you have done for us today. We pray that we, not, we shall not be leaking vessels, but we shall retain all you have told us. We shall go back to make amendments of life. That our lives may show forth that we have been in your presence. We are praying that we will not neglect any point that you have told us today. Even the prayers we have prayed and everything we have done, that is account for us. Lord, give us Christian homes. Lord, this is a pathway to revival. We are praying that you will not leave us alone. Thank you, Father. Thank you because we know that you will do us good, that you will lead us into the very perfect will of God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we are going to. I just want to finish up what I was saying last night and um, we we'll see whether we can take something more. But before I do that, there's, there's a piece of paper here that somebody gave to me. So I've been pondering of the following. Can you help me? Can you help me who has not recovered, not received for our own life first? Really help anyone else? Are you help me here? Are you help me here? Eh? Listen to the question. Can I help me who has not received help for her own life? First, really help anybody else? Eh? Are you saying no? With <laughs> okay. With such, a, with such a help, meet. With such a help, me rather not to be a trouble. Will she be a trouble? Quality of a man's life sometimes depends on the, on the quality of his health needs. The quality of a man's life sometimes depends on the quality of his health needs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are three proposals. I want to take them away. We cannot preach on them now, but they are very critical. I would have liked to take them and do a teaching on them. I'm hoping that in the course of this year, we are going to have several meetings. Um, I don't know whether we are going to have several, at least one meeting on, on the Christian home again. It's very needful, is it not? Very needful. All these little girls I'm seeing here, you need to be built up. Because you are going to occupy somebody's home. If you are going to be a pastor's wife, you're going to be anybody's wife, and you're not yet built up yourself. That's not an ajebota. I don't know how you can help. So we are going to really, really, some points are coming out, and I'm, I'm, I think we are going to really tear them up in, in, in further issues. Is that all right? So please pray along with me that the Lord will give us grace. Mm -hmm. That we will, I want a training for the women, a training for the men, and that we should take it seriously. And when you go home, check your daughter. She's very beautiful. She's in the campus. And she's about to get married. If, if, if you come to get married to somebody you know very well, will you allow her to get married? That these are the areas where our home begin to fail. All right. Let us take this matter seriously. I think this meeting is very critical for us because it's beginning to point out issues. And if we are serious with ourselves and we go back, I think God will help us. Amen? Don't look at your partner first. Look at yourself. The problem may be with yourself and you are looking at your partner. So God will help us. When these questions have been asked here into your heart, think of them. A help me too is not ready to help. What will she be? 
What will she be? What will she be? Papa, trouble. Not a help, but a trouble. If you marry a trouble, I'm, you're unfortunate. So God must help us. Is that you a trouble? Okay, I hope, you, I hope you're not a trouble. But these questions were asked by a lady. And she must have known what she's asking. And this is a wake-up call for all of us. Clearly, mothers, you must train your daughters very well. Hmm? Clearly, mothers, you must train your daughters very well. Mothers. Oh, my God. Mothers. Eh? Are you here? Aha. Uh -huh. And fathers too, but mothers particularly. Tonight, I want to go to where I stopped last night. I want to round up what I talked to you about last night. Talking about courtship. We are seeing how God made the woman for the man. And let's go to verse 23, 24 and 25. Then I go to verse chapter 3 a little bit and see how far we can go. Now I've said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. They were both naked, the man and his wife. They were not ashamed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God had made the man, the woman and brought her to the man, the man, the man said, Wow, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. What's the woman? Bone of and flesh of. That's what he is. This is looking impossible for us sitting here physically, but this is what the Lord made it. Marry a wife and she's not your bone and not your flesh. Then you're in trouble. What God made in the very beginning, we are seeing that your wife should be your bone and your flesh. You know, is that also? Touch, every man touch, touch your bone. Every man touch your bone. Touch your bone. Can you see your bone? Can you see, your, can you see the flesh attached to it? What's your wife? When you say foolish, what's, what, what, what are you saying? That we are very foolish. We say an idiot. What are you saying? That you are number one idiot. You know, if we understand the Bible very well, there are some mistakes we cannot make. There are costly mistakes. Your wife is yourself, whether you like it or not. And you should be tender with her. You should be, you should be, you should be, you should, you should really handle her with care. See, many women cannot perform. Because they have been cowed. They have been, they have been handled many, very badly. It would have been a great help, help for you, but the way you handled her is not good for her. She has become timid. She has become something that is not for you. Let's take these corrections. They will help us. Huh? This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And stop looking outside for your bone and your flesh. Why you married? And they gave you time to do courtship. Abi? And they gave you time to do everything. And after you went and signed the dotted lines, they say, sign, you sign. You cannot now say that you don't know that it's your bone and your flesh. That's why we have a courtship. There are other women around. If you, if you think that they are better for you, then you leave your wife and go and marry them. But once you are married, once you sign dotted lines, where it becomes what? Your bone of bones and your flesh of flesh. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? No matter how she behaves, no matter what she does, she is your bone and your flesh. And I wish, I wish God will give us a second chance. Oh, to talk to people to go and marry another woman for six months and then come back. 
and check between her and your first wife. What, which one is better? I mean, of course, you like that. I know you will like it. But I will not give you a chance. I'm not God. <laughs> but in case God gives you a chance, then you, can, you have a right to come back and report to me. You see, I'm, I'm afraid of what is going to happen if we don't correct our homes now. I'm talking about Koshi, but I'm talking about new homes. I'm talking about some people have even given up. It ought not to be so. Amen? Amen? She's bone of your bones and flesh of your flesh. Not that person on earth. Even if you marry her without praying. Even if you marry her without thinking. But you are married her. You have signed dotted lines in the church. What is she? Your bone and your flesh. There's no alternative. You cannot go anywhere again. You are trapped. You agree with me? Whether you agree with me or not anyway. This is what she is. Bone of your bones. Flesh of your flesh. What the dead do you part? You know right to be looking around. So before you marry, that's what I was saying, before you marry, take time to check. Take time to check. Even in this meeting, if you feel that, that this, this girl I'm cutting with is not my wife, come and tell me. I'll call her. I will check it. It's not good to marry and then you start looking left and right. Don't I even say it in the hall, in the room. Say, look, I wish I had married that, that girl. So that my people refuse. That's why I came to you. That's foolishness. And the girl can give it to you straight. They look at you. Yeah, yeah, man. You to say anything. <laughs> Make a no talk. Then trouble will start. If you talk again, I'll punch your mouth. And then you come to me and say, this, this, look at this word, this word. You will say what you said first. But these are the problems we have. We don't appreciate what God has done. That this man I married has no better woman on earth. And there can, cannot be any better woman on earth because this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Is that all right? Is that all right? So as from tonight, if you go back to your house, appreciate your wife. Appreciate your husband. Two of you are tied together to be one. Until death do you part. Only death. No divorce. Death. Death. She will be called woman. What shall she be called? What's woman? The man with the womb. Is that what you said? The man with the womb. Ah, I didn't know before. She will be called woman. There are some things they took, they took out of you, man, and put in her. Which makes her a woman, distinct from a man. But both of them are men. There's no more womb in a man. So you cannot be a child. That's what God has done. She shall be called woman. And if you go to another woman, apart from your own woman, you just suffer for nothing. Are you hearing me? If you go to any other woman, apart from your own woman, what happens? What happens? You just waste your life. I mean, if I have any child outside your wife, oh, I'm sorry for you. S sometimes when you die, that when the people are settled down, that the children of the wo that one woman will come and say, now, nah, Papa, too, make the share land for us. Have you, not, have you seen that before? Huh? A terrible thing will happen. When Abraham went to Hagar, I told you last night, it was not the wish, will of God. And, he's, and, and, and I know that he was going to suffer it so much. Not that God showed him mercy. But Lord, but Brian, please, let us know that she's, she shall be called woman. Does he behave like, does he behave like a man? Does she behave like a man? No. The Bible said, dwell with her according to knowledge. Is that what the Bible said? As the weaker vessel, as somebody you can help, 
Don't ever treat your wife as a, even if your wife has become a man, never treat her as a man. You must treat her according to knowledge so that you will do well with her. Hallelujah. She's your woman. That's the only name she was called at that time. Because she was taken out of man. Where was she before? Inside. And they took her out to make her your wife. And believe me, this is the truth. So if you are going to marry her, where must she go back? Where must she go back? Inside you. It's not, it's not possible to quietly visualize, but this is the truth. If she must be your wife, she must go back to where she came out from. You are two, but you are not two indeed, you are one. This has implications. This has a lot of implications. But we don't look at the implications when we, when we talk. Nobody, no third party must come into this. That is why you must be careful who you marry. You must be careful how you marry. You must be careful when you marry. Amen. Amen. Because she was because she was taken out of man. That's why she's called a woman. I'm very I'm going to be very brief on this passage tonight because I know you have learned it before. But repeat something over and over to you again, Miss. God wants you to hear it again. Maybe tonight, God will make you to realize that you have been making a mistake. This woman is your bone and your flesh. She has been called a woman because she was taken out of man. She bears your children because she has a womb. You don't have a womb. You have the sperm. But that does not mean that you are all and all. If I was going to be particular about this, I will have said you go back now home and change all your accounts, change all your all your all your all your documents to Mr. and Mrs. In some of our tribes, when a man dies, who comes? Yeah? When a, a woman die, when a man dies now in some in some of our culture, who comes? The brothers of the man. So why is it, why is it not the cushion? Sit down on the floor. Before we talk anything, sit on the floor first. Then they go to the rooms and begin to search. They take the account. They want to know how much the man let them know. But that is not their business. When do you solve this problem? You know when the woman is about to die. Are you hearing me? You should live with her as your wife. No other person should know your account. They are parents that they should know your account. They are trained to thank, thank you, sir. We must marry as Christian brethren. If you are afraid of your wife, don't marry her. Hallelujah. I'm saying this with certain reservations in my heart concerning some marriages that I've seen which don't meet the test of time. Therefore, I'm leaving verse 23. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Why must this happen? What's the word? What's the not therefore? Huh? For this reason, which reason? For this reason, for the reason of verse 23. That is why a man should leave his father and his mother. Is that all right? You leave who? I don't want to be there, but that's, that's what the Bible said. Leave your father and your mother, your brothers and your sisters, your best friend, and be joined to your wife. And they shall become what? That's, that, that's the truth. If you see why this thing works, oh, you will enjoy yourself. Therefore, on account of what said in verse 23, a man should leave his father and his mother. Leave them and be joined to your wife. And this joining is not one day. It's a continuous thing. There's a basic joining at, at wedding, but that's not the all, all the joining. As you live together a happy life, you will keep being joined. And I want to say it, some of us have not been fully joined up to today. 
pray hard that God will enable you to be joined to your husband very well so that you will be one indeed. It's always very, very, very bad for me when a man dies, a woman, a man dies, and, and the woman cannot control the house. You know, doesn't know anything. And don't people come and take the money that you're going to use to pay your children's school fees and chop it. And you are left to, to, to sorrow and to, and to be unhappy. You have four children. The first one is in, is in secondary school. And they come and take all the money you have used to pay for your children's school fees. And they share it among the brothers of the man and give you small money. I pray that this kind of thing will not happen among us. Eh? Eh? The way I say amen, you're not convinced. Yes, amen. No, no, I thank God for that amen, but I don't, think, I don't think you are old enough to say that amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm saying, I'm saying facts that we don't observe on something happened. Maybe when you are when when you still working, you ask your you say next of kin, you write to your father or your mother or your brother. After you are wedded, you should go and cancel it and put to your wife as next of kin and your son, probably as second of kin. Those people have nothing to do with you again. If they are trained, even if they are they want to train you, they have nothing to do with you again. I didn't say you should not bless them. If you have plenty of money, you can send to your uncle, you can send to your, your, your auntie who has nothing. But that is two of you must send it together, not only one of you. I hope we have chance to discuss these things. We're going to have another meeting, probably. And take time to discuss issues. But we cannot discuss all issues in this meeting. But this is where many of us are failing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined. Oh, I wish I had time. When I was young, we used to deal with these verses very, very much. And be joined to his wife. They become something different from the way originally. And they shall become one flesh. And they continue to be one flesh more and more and more and more as days go on. Hallelujah. This is why I say to you, you must not marry without being sure. You must not marry in a hurry. You must not say when we marry, we will put it right. It will not be right. The period of courtship is a very important period in, in, in a marriage. If you do utilize your own, your, own, your own very well, then you have nobody to blame. These are issues that should be discussed well during courtship. Well, and two of you agree. You discuss your finances, you discuss everything about your lives because you're entering something which your parents, your brothers and sisters have no right to come in. And when you go with your wife now, your wife goes to the, to the family, the husband goes to the family. Are you trying to bring a, a village war? Why are you going to your family to go and report your husband? Why are you going to your family to report your wife? It's foolishness. Why don't you go to the brethren? Why don't you come to me and report? Not to your father. And you look at what she's done for me. The man said to his father, don't mind. I will, I will bring her. We will deal with her. And we keep having these problems. We keep having these problems. But let me talk about courtship now. If we cut well and we marry well, we have for I will leave my father and my mother and be joined to my wife. And this journey is not once and for all. As we marry, we, are, we continue to join in. And they shall become one flesh, one. You see all that two people, but it's only one person you see. Hallelujah. 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 And they were both naked, the man and his wife. And we're not ashamed. That's the conclusion of this verse. They were both what? They were both what? So in the beginning, they didn't wear any clothes. That's the expression of innocence. They 
They didn't wear any clothes. They were both naked. They didn't even know. That's how God made them. They were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. What's the implication of this? The implication of this is that, hallelujah, is that both of them had no secrets. They were naked. They were, this man saw this man, wishes, this man saw this man, he wishes, no, no, nothing to add, nothing to remove. Even if he had a fault, the man knew it. The woman knew it. They were both naked. And they were not they were not what? They were not what? Ashamed. The man will help the woman. The woman will help the man. The man will pray for the man. The man will pray for the woman. The woman will pray for the man. They were praying consistently for themselves. There was no secret. There was no. I don't know what you are doing. That was the first marriage we have. This, 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 uh, this, this, not talking about secrecy is very, very important. Nowadays, most, most men marry most women, but they don't know their bank accounts. They don't know many things about the other person. That's not marriage. That's why they say, do a thorough courtship. Get to know what you don't know now. Many of us, even in caution, we are we are still not serious. We are not we are not open to one another, and we marry and we don't know many things about each other, and we think that it will work. I'm saying this because many of us who are married should not go back and do their courtship well. I don't know whether it's called courtship after you marry, but you should do your uh, what do I call it? Huh? Commit. You should do your marriage. What do you mean by that? I'm an, I'm, I'm an advocate of being cautious when you are married. It's too late, but you can do it, even if it's not perfect. Take your books. You see, those of us who are married, we are too outward looking, we are too church looking, and the church is not helping matters. The church has service every morning at six o'clock, five o'clock, and lady, the man must be there and go there from there to work and from, from work back. What kind of life is that? The couple must learn to spend more time alone if they go to they go to church together. If they read any book, they read it together. Help yourselves. Hallelujah. The Lord will help all of us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, I want us to pray now. I want us to really pray now. That God will intervene. That God will come and show us mercy. That God will do something new in our lives. That God will change the way we think. That the flesh will go away. That Jesus will take his place in our lives. Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? For further inquiry or counsel, contact Reshes Media Center, number one, Refuge Close, on Gwambarde, Sabon Tashia Kaduna. Telephone numbers 0814. 408-9412-0805-845-5719 Email address threshesteam at yahoo.com or you could visit our website at www.threshesteam.org.ng